Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. They are my colleagues. They are my students. I would like to say welcome you all to our speech about can engineer benefits from machine learning model in solving complex phenomena. This is prepared by Assistant Prof. Dr. Yusuf Kasim and by second speaker will be Assistant Prof. Dr. Berna Uzun. Her speech is Introduction of Multi-Criteria Decision Analysis. And later on, Associate Prof. Dr. Dilber Uzun Özşahin will make her presentation about application of multi-criteria decision analysis in civil engineering. As you see, this seminar is a good example for collaboration in between faculties. Today, four speakers coming from three different faculties. Engineering faculty, Faculty of Arts and Sciences, Faculty of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Thank you so much to all speakers and all participants. And let me start uh, first to my presentation. This is our topic. Next, please. Yes. Can engineer benefits from machine learning models in solving complex phenomena? This is our contents. I will talk about the, our research center, engineers and scientists, machine learning models, and I will make a summary at the end. Energy, Environment, and Water Research Center is named as a Turkish name, Enchesu. Enchesu. The Energy, Environment, and Water Research Center, Enchesu, is newly established in 2019. Before a year, our faculty established 2018. Enchesu research has been focused on analyzing of natural resource systems, modeling of special and temporal aspects of the sustainable development and water related issues with the main goal of solving real problems in water management, treatments and reuse, groundwater management, irrigation and hydrological monitoring. And CESU is designed to be and to act as the research arm for the energy and water related ministries, departments, and authorities. The vision of NCESU is to be sure that energy is used in an efficient way and renewable energy is utilized as much as possible. Research activities are carried out within the framework of one or more of NCESU's four established divisions, namely water and environment, energy and environment, energy and water, climate change. This is the board, our board, NCESU board. Next, please. This is our board, as you see, Professor, before. Let's show them in a board. Not this one, Yusuf Hoca. Come back to one more. Back. Yes, this is our board. And Chesu board members, as you see, very famous, very familiar professors, consist of our board. Professor Derin Orhan, Professor Dr. Wahid Nurani, Dr. Asare Ahmed, you know, uh, the Nobel laureate winner, 2007 Peace uh, Prize. Nobel Peace Prize Award, we got 2007, and Assistant Prof. Dr. Yusuf Kasım. Young generation is coming very strong. Yes, and as you remember, the first activity uh, held on uh, by us, by Faculty of Civil and Environmental Engineering and NCESU Research Center together, the first speakers were the rector of uh, Izmir Yüksek Technology Institute and vice rector of this university, Professor Dr. Yusuf Baran and Professor Dr. Alper Baba. Yes, 
After this uh, simple uh, introduction, let me continue to show my presentation. Uh, the main topic is engineers and scientists. As engineers, we look with admiration and open some to a natural system. It seems that nature has found ways to solve even real heart problems, which create easy and elegant. This has led many engineers and scientists to try to understand and ultimately harness the principles of nature for their own problems. It is not new that natural system inspire engineers and scientists, but only recently we started to gain insight and understanding in the mechanisms that give them their unique properties. Engineers generally think of themselves as problem solvers. Unlike scientists who examine the world around them to obtain an understanding of things as they are and have been, engineers are concerned with creating something new, something which is currently not in existence and which never has been. For example, scientists such as geographers and engineers are both interested in the science of hydrology, which deals with climate, precipitation, flood, and drought. The geographer measures rainfall and resulting floods to understand, among other things, how river flows respond to rainfall, how much water runs over the land, how much is stored and how much is evaporated. The measurements are made primarily to obtain a picture and understanding of existing natural phenomena and the interrelationship among them. Engineers make identical measurements and make use of identical data, but for quite different reasons. Frequently, engineers are called upon to design and construct structures which must cope with the effect of moving water, for example, drainage channels from parking lots, stormwater sewers, culverts, under roads, bridges across rivers, flood control works, irrigation schemes and dams, and reservoirs, and etc. Machine learning. The behavior of wide variety of complex system can be modeled by machine learning model as potent nonlinear mathematical paradigm. A, a, a machine learning model is a file that has been trained to recognize certain types of pattern. You train a model over a set of data, providing it an algorithm that it can use to reason over an learn from those data. Once you have trained the model, you can use it to reason over data that it hasn't seen before and make predictions about those data. Machine learning algorithms build a mathematical model based on sample data known as training data in order to make predictions or decisions without being explicitly programmed to do so. In recent years, some new soft computing techniques, such as artificial neural networks, fuzzy inference systems, etc., and their hybrids have been used for developing predictive models to estimate the necessary parameters. These techniques can be used as alternate statistical tool and to detect trends that are too complex to be noticed by humans. Currently, artificial neural networks and fuzzy logic approaches, which are a subfield of intelligent systems, have been widely used to solve a variety of problems in engineering applications. Having high speed, simplicity, flexibility, 
and excellent learning ability, such as artificial intelligence based approaches, represent various applications in several industrial and scientific fields. As a summary, engineering, design, and operational decisions depends largely on engineers' understanding of applications. This includes assumptions made to simplify problems to solve them. However, these assumptions often introduce errors compared to the actual behavior of an application. Increasing access to sensor or virtual data and computational resources combined with democratization of advanced machine learning algorithms leads to greater use of machine learning. This brings field data and engineering knowledge together, allowing for an increased level of overall accuracy in decision-making and design performance improvement. Thank you so much for listening to me. I complete my introduction uh, speech, and now the main speaker, the first speaker is coming. Let me repeat again his name, Assistant Prof. Dr. Bernauzun. Bernauzun uh, topic, introduction of multi-criteria decision analysis. She is coming from Department of Mathematics, Faculty of Arts and Sciences, and also he is uh, spending, uh, she is spending her time Desam Institute, also Desam Institute. Okay. I would like to invite the speaker, uh, Assistant Prof. Dr. Bernauzon. We are waiting the second speaker, Assistant Prof. Dr. Bernauzon. Bernauzon, you can start. Your speech. Yes. Do you? Uh, do you okay. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. We are hearing you. Uh, Welcome again. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure, and I want to thank you, uh, and I want to thanks to nearest university for offering us this meeting, and especially I want to thank uh, Professor Doctor for arranging this meeting. Uh, the topic of, uh, okay, the topic I'm going to talk about is introduction of multi-criteria decision analysis. Here is my out outline. First, I'm going to introduce you what the decision making is, and then I'm going to introduce you multi-criteria decision analysis, especially the, uh, the techniques of TOPSIS and the PROMITI will be introduced in this in this uh, presentation and let me start with introducing you the decision what is the decision decision is the is the thing that we use in every level of our life in in, a, in any minute we do the decision and then we have the consequences about the decision we take for example we can choose uh, watching TV instead of studying or instead of going to cinema. And this is also a decision we take. And it has outcomes, of course. And you can enjoy uh, your time or you can work and to, uh, you can have better like future in, in long term. And it's up to the decision we take now, maybe. And a decision is a choice between two or more available alternatives. And in real life, we have too many alternatives uh, for each, uh, for many cases. We don't have only one alternative to take. We have too many. And what is the decision making? It is a mental process of analyzing your options, comparing them, selecting one or more of alternative behaviors in a person or an organizational level to achieve a goal and decisions are made within a system of internal and external constraints there is too many factors that could affect our 
decision, uh, internal ones and the external ones. And it is depending on the decision we take, uh, depending on the situation, actually. So, multi-criteria decision analysis is a subfield of the decision-making science. When you have more than one uh, criteria for your decision, and when, of course, when making decision, at least you should have two alternatives or more alternatives. And for each alternative, if we are thinking about more criteria, more than one criteria, it is a topic of the multi-criteria decision analysis. And it provides you understanding the complex problems and uh, creating, a, creating a figure or creating some tool that could uh, make a manageable, okay, that uh, you could you could create a manageable, okay, you could decrease the complexity of the decision actually by by applying to multi-criteria decision techniques. It, it supports the decision makers actually. Uh, because when you have more than one criteria, you uh, and I mean when you have ten criteria, you cannot you cannot think and feel which is the best if one is not the best in each point and for each criteria. That's why you should be care. We should be careful about the uh, about the all the criteria which could affect uh, which has effect on our our decision. And of course, it is a it is really complex problem. That is why it has been it has been used used since seventies uh, in in different field in many fields in finance and in engineering in in health in many parts of the science to to select the best option actually, and it's since. 70s it has been created there has been created many many techniques that could help the decision maker and there is no only one unique optimum solution because the preferences are different because the decision maker has different preferences for different preferences we could apply okay we, we could apply different techniques which could help uh, which could help the help analyzing the data because uh, there is okay each technique is not suitable for any data okay for a for a type of the data you could apply different type of the decision making techniques and that is why it's not really easy and it has an advantage it helps the decision maker understanding the problem and thinking about the problem, thinking about the, all the alternatives and the, all the parameters that could be important for taking a decision. And it, it is the work of the decision maker. This is the big advantage. And it makes the problem less complex than it looks like. And here is what I, okay, this, this is the, Available MCDA techniques, multi decision analysis techniques, and the analytical ones because some of them are not, not analytical, and the most the mostly used ones are AHP, Vicar, Topsis, and Prometi techniques, and there are different different approach that could be. Uh, could be helpful for different type of data, as I said before. And of course, you we can also create our own techniques if, if we think about. And there is also the hybrid techniques that uh, that is worked on worked by many researchers. The hybrid techniques are nowadays very uh, very popular. So what is the elements of MCDA problems? Of course, the first, uh, first element is the aim. And the decision maker preferences is the most important part which could affect the result, the ranking result. And alternatives, criterion, and outcomes associated with alternatives. Those are the, all the elements of 
uh, any kind of multi criteria decision analysis. We have our aim. We have okay decision maker as a group or a in a person. And of course, the preferences is the most important thing could change the result. And here is the figure that could uh, help you to visualize it. The aim. Okay. So this is the figure of the any kind of multi criteria decision analysis techniques. We have the aim, we have the criterion, it could be more than one, and we have the alternatives, it should be more than one, of course. And of course, and there are some notes that I want to uh, aware you about. The de good decisions can only be made. Okay, I have a problem. No, it's better. Yeah. Good decisions can be made only for clear, realistic, measurable, and understandable purposes. Because if you don't define very well your purpose, and you will get lost at some point of the decision making pro process. And of course, the the good alternatives for today maybe is not good alternative for tomorrow. That is why the time is very important, uh, and uh, close, medium, and long terms can create different MCDA problems and for a different ranking result for the same problem. Also, in long term, I would prefer something else, and but in short term, maybe I have less option that I I should take, and it depends on the time, of course. It will affect. Here, you, here I want to show you some. Okay, the studies between two thousand one and two thousand fourteen. The studies between two thousand one and two thousand fourteen. Okay, mostly used uh, technique is AHP, thirty three per uh, by thirty three person. Then, then hybrid MCDM techniques is really. Uh, getting increased number of these studies recently, and topsis is also eleven percent used by uh, by researchers. AHP used more because it is it is all those techniques, analytical techniques, as I uh, I can say, it is the oldest, but it helps it supports the decision maker as the others. And let me continue. The process of MCDA. Firstly, we need to define our problem. Then we need to model our problem. We need to obtain all the data which could affect as a criterion, which which could uh, which could affect the decision uh, maker decision. And. We should obtain the solution, of course, after we model and we decide the techniques we use, and then we better uh, we we obtain the solution. But at the end, we have to uh, read the solution very well because sometimes the techniques could could not be uh, suitable, and you could uh, even by eyes you can you can feel that is not a good uh, result. Depend it depends. We, uh, if if you didn't obtain a good result, maybe you better you better change your technique or you better think about the data you collected. Maybe it's not rational. The, the first technique I'm going to introduce you is the TOPSIS, the technique for order of preference by similarity to ideal solution. The, the TOPSIS technique is based on cre uh, creating a positive ideal solution and negative ideal solution and counting the distance between the each alternatives and the positive ideal solution and negative ideal solution. The solution which is closer to the positive ideal solution is the better alternative according to the TOPSIS technique. And the solution which is Farther to the positive ideal solution, 
the alternative, the alternative which is farther to the positive ideal solution is the last effective uh, alternative that shouldn't be considered by decision maker. This technique has been created by Ching Lai uh, Huang and Yon in 81, and it has development, uh, it's, it's developed by Yan in uh, 1987. And okay, there, uh, there, there are some techniques introduced and then there, they, had, uh, they have uploaded by the other researcher and, and also it get the last version because in, in one step you cannot create the best technique sometimes you get the uh, you get to update it according to the problem which is not you which cannot be used with your technique like that's why you have to you have to know that the first version is the not, not the best anyway let me introduce you this uh, this is this is the analytical technique that could help to the decision maker when it, when it has the conflicting criteria. Let me continue. Uh, what is the what is the steps of the uh, the first step of the topsies? Firstly, we have to determine the weight of criteria and building a decision a decision matrix. Uh, the weight of the criteria is the importance that the decision maker gives for each criteria. And the total amount of this value, the weight of the criteria should be one. And the criteria of function could be a benefit function or a cost function, which I'm gonna introduce you after this one. The first step is defining the importance weight, which is the uh, which which has really big effect on the result. Let me introduce you the uh, general form of a decision matrix. Here you have the aim. You have the aim. Aim could be maxim uh, maximization or minimization of each criteria, and here we have in row. We have the alternatives, and in columns we have the criteria. Imagine we have four criteria and three alternatives, and the combination of them are the data set. And we have to uh, we have to define the importance weight for each criteria. For example, if the cost is one criteria, and I don't care about the cost, I would give very less point for the weight of the cost. If quality were very important for me, I would give uh, like 90, uh, 0 0.90 degree to the quality. It depends on the decision maker. And let's continue. The second step of the, this is the general form of the, any kind of decision making problems. You could, you could create this data for any kind of decision making problems, but when you want to, when you want to apply to the analytical techniques, okay? This needed for each type. And second step is calculation of the normalized decision matrix. Calculation, uh, we have to calculate the normalized decision matrix because each criteria has different units. By normalization, you, you make the units equal and then it won't affect your, uh, okay. Then you can, you can do your analysis in this technique. Okay, because cost has the different unit and quality has no unit. And, uh, you, cannot, you cannot analyze them. You need to apply to the normalization to get the same unit for each criterion. Continue with the okay. There is uh, there is different different type of the normalization methods. Like uh, here is the mostly used normalization uh, for for You could you could apply any of them. The result one. The third step. The third step is 
calculation of the weighted normalized decision matrix. Uh, after, after we calculate the normalize, uh, normalized matrix, we have to multiply each column. We have to multiply each column with the preference weight we defined before at the decision matrix. And we have to, then we, we have our weighted normalized decision matrix. And then we can continue. I mean, we have to multiply each. Okay, after we normalize these data, we have to multiply each column with the weights. And then we have our normalized weighted decision matrix. And then the fourth step is calculate. Uh, no, let yeah. Here is the fourth step. Fourth step is the term uh, determination of the positive ideal solution and the negative ideal solution. What is the positive ideal solution? Okay, it is a set of the advantages, uh, which okay the criteria uh, the. It's a set that could be arranged from the decision uh, normalized weighted decision matrix. Okay, we have a uh, we have a set. The first uh, defines the first criteria, the best option of the first criteria. The second uh, value is the the best option of the second criteria, and the, this is the the best of the uh, uh, the best option of the end criteria. For example, if if we are talking about the cost, the minimum point should be here somewhere. If it is in the first uh, criteria, and if we are talking about the quality, then the maximum point should be here. And here is. Always, it looks. Complicated, but it's not really. And the negative ideal solution is the is the set that that is the worst option for each criteria. The the collection of the worst option from each criteria. Let me let me make it easier. Let me make it easier. Okay. If the minimum point is better from this first uh, first column, then we pick. The minimum point as the first element of the uh, positive ideal solution. If the maximum point is okay, if the aim is the maximum maximization, then the maximum point should be in the positive ideal solution, and the opposite is the, uh, as the negative ideal solution. Let me show you. And then. Here is our positive ideal solution and negative ideal solution. Then we calculate the distance between each alternative to positive ideal solution and the negative ideal solution. With an example, I'm gonna show how we calculate. And here is the uh, here is the last step of the Topsis technique: the calculation of the relative closeness to positive ideal solution uh, by dividing the distance to Okay, the distance to negative ideal solution over the sum of the distance of the, the distance to the positive and negative ideal solution is giving the relative closeness to the positive ideal solution. The the higher the lo the lower uh, relative closeness to positive ideal solution is the better alternative. No, 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 opposite. Uh, the higher R sub I is the better alternative. And let me continue with the second technique, which is the Prometi. Prometi is another analytical technique that could help to uh, rank the alternatives where there is multi criteria exist. And it can be used to handle qualitative and quantitative data simultaneously. That is why it has its own advantages. And it has it gives the opportunity to decision makers that pick for each criteria different preferences functions, which I'm gonna show you here. 
okay if if the distance between okay if the difference between two alternatives for one specific criteria is is some point then with the usual preference function the one which is better get the one the point one from the preference function and the one which has lower uh, okay which is which is not better has the zero as the preference point but sometimes i can i can allow decision okay as a as a decision maker i can i can think of some point that could some point of q as you as in u shape that I can I can say there is no difference between two alternatives where there is a difference between them is a point okay the ten point if there is a ten point I don't give any priority to anyone because I mean maybe ten dollar difference then I can pay it is not a big distance okay big difference that is why until this point you give no preference to anyone but after this queue, you give the preference to the better one. Okay? And there is a different type of the preference functions, which is V-shape, level shape, and let me show you linear shape and the Gaussian shape. The Gaussian uh, use the standard deviation and that, to give the priority to one alternative. That is why I Okay, it gives a priority uh, depending on the da data, the sun, uh, standard deviation of the data. That is why I prefer this more. But it depends on the decision maker. For each criteria, we have ability to pick one of them. And, and we, uh, we can use any of them for our aim. Here is the okay. Here is the different type of the preference functions. But uh, I I want to mention about some steps that we apply when we when we want to use Prometheus technique. We have to define a specific preference function for each criterion, and we have to determine the weight of each criterion. And normalization of weights or equality of weights can be decided at the discretion of the decision maker based on the application. I mean, you, oh, what do we mean? The sum of the weight should, okay, not have to be in total one. It's up to the decision maker in this Prometheus technique. But in Topsys technique, the sum should be one. It's up to the decision maker for Prometheus. And after we create the distance between the Okay. After we after we uh, we calculate the distance between two alternatives and we pick our preference function, then we have to determine the outranking relation. The outranking relation can be calculated with this formula. With this formula, you see the weighted the sum of the weighted uh, preference preference value uh, is the outranking relation of a sub t over a sub t prime a sub t is one alternative a sub t prime is the others and then after we calculate this outranking relation we have to determine the positive and negative outranking flows by applying this formula this is the average of the uh, outranking uh, function the average of the outranking function but this is the average of the uh, average of the how much how much outranked one alternatives i'm gonna show you with an example this one also and after you get the positive and negative outranking flows that then you can compare the partially the the, uh, the alternatives okay the positive outranking flows is is the positive thing about the alternative and negative outranking flow how much the one alternative dominated by others and that is why the positive out if 
one alternative has bigger positive out, uh, outranking flow, then it is better alternative. But sometimes it has it is it has also a bigger negative outranking flow than we should think about at this point. Okay, imagine if the one alternative. Okay, there are different different scenario I want to mention about. If positive outranking flow of 80 is bigger and negative outranking flow is less than uh, 80 prime, negative outranking of the 80 prime, then we cannot use the Promethe one. We have to apply it to Promethe two. If positive outranking is bigger and negative outrankings are equal, then 80 is the better alternative than the 80 prime. If we have equally positive outranking flows and less outra uh, negative outranking flow for 80, then 80 is better than the others also. But this, uh, okay, this is really, if, if the positive outranking is bigger and negative outranking is less for 80, then it is also a good alternative. But uh, if we have two alternatives which has the positive and negative outranking flows are equal, then they both is not preferable to each other. They both are equal decisions. And if we have positive outranking is bigger, negative outranking is still bigger then, and also if positive outranking is less and negative outranking is less for a sub t then also they cannot be comparable we have to apply to promethe 2 to compare this situation to compare this 80 and 80 prime and we apply to promethe 2 with this formula uh, this is the net outranking flow can be calculated by distance between positive and negative outranking flows and this says the higher uh, net flow is the better alternative. The, the alternative which has the higher net flow. And let's continue. Okay, I'll show this. Yes, uh, this I informed already. Sometimes the data, sometimes we have the data which, uh, which is Okay, which is not a uh, crisp. Uh, we can define it applying to the fuzzy logic, and we should cross. Uh, we should prepare our data according to the according to the uh, applying uh, applying to fuzzy logic. We prepare our data. Then the, with the fuzzification, we could we could create the. Uh, crisp data which can be used for other techniques like analytical techniques like Promethe and Topsys. That uh, fuzzy logic, okay, this is the hybrid technique we, we could apply. Well, and also for creating the importance weight we could apply to AHP. And this is also another hybrid technique can be applied with Promethe and Topsys. Mm -hmm. And my my colleague will continue with the, some examples of the um, MCVA techniques with uh, with civil engineering problems. Okay. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Assistant Prof. Doctor uh, Berna Uzun, thank you so much for your very interesting and valuable presentation uh, about introduction of multi-criteria decision analysis. Really, uh, I learned many things uh, at the end of your uh, presentation. I hope that also our colleagues and our students, especially our uh, master students, learn many things. Thank you so much, uh, really. And I think, I think. Uh, yeah, really, it was very interesting and a, and a hot topic. It's a new, uh, new idea, new uh, study. Uh, everybody uh, should interest because of time is changing and the research technique is changing and really you spend a good effort for us thank you so much and 
Now, uh, I would like to invite uh, Associate Prof. Dr. Dilberuzun Özşahin uh, to present her uh, paper about applications of multi-criteria decision analysis in civil engineering. She will focus on, especially, the civil engineering. How can they use this new technique, new uh, technology, new method? And really, I am very excited and uh, I am very interesting to listen her presentation. I hope that uh, students also uh, uh, continue to listen to us. Uh, really, I'm very excited because of nobody knows uh, the corona uh, virus happened, this pandemic uh, happened, and many things changed. And we adapted quickly. We adapted. And really, I'm very excited because we are doing an online online uh, seminar, online uh, activities, uh, we adapt. Uh, we are not uh, very young, but uh, we adapt uh, quickly. We are lucky. And this is the reality. And now I don't want to continue to uh, uh, speak because of our uh, speaker ready. Uh, she fixed uh, the first page. And let's listen carefully. I'm, so I'm saying, especially my uh, master's students, please listen, uh, Associate Prof. Dr. Dilber Uzunöz Şahin. Okay. Uh, Hocam, please, we are listening yeah. to you. Of course, I would like to thank you all for, especially to you, Dr. Hussein, uh, and NCESU, uh, the new research center, uh, for you know, organizing this great conference during the in the middle of August, let's say. It's really such a great honor to give a talk and share our knowledge with the students so we could collaborate between this kind of different uh, department, which is a little bit far for, from my uh, field, civil engineering. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about application of multi-criteria decision analysis in civil engineering. Uh, in principle, I'm from Biomedical Engineering Department and working for DESAM Institute Research Center. Uh, but since two years, I think we are collaborating with civil engineering. In fact, we are the first group in the world who is applying multi-criteria decision analysis in civil engineering, uh, which I will show you some application of it. Uh, let us talk about a little bit more the decision-making theories. So, Dr. Barna has uh, summarized it quite well. I would like to give some intro, like small introduction myself as well. Uh, in principle, decision-making is like you have so many different kind of criteria, and you don't really know exactly which is the which, which option is the best one. So there, decision theories could help you to decide which uh, option for you, like as a ranking, for you the best thing. So this is like mathematical methodology you can imagine on. And it should be interesting enough and helpful enough for the society who, ne who needs to have answer uh, to choose something. It could be anything, which I will tell you about more in detail. So for this, we are using fuzzy logic. As Dr. Barna mentioned, uh, fuzzy logic is like uh, when you have like not certain values, like you don't exactly know which values uh, it's gonna be like affecting your system. When like it's fuzzy, like you really don't know exactly what it is. There you could use this uh, fuzzy logic in in this kind of field. So when your truth values of variables might be any number between zero to one that you could have like introduction, like somehow output outcomes out of it. I would like you to think, imagine, like you need to check your blood sugar, for instance, and your blood, if your blood sugar is 10, I'm just now making up, if your blood sugar is 10 and is in under risk, if it's 10, so what happened in 9.99, for instance, there fuzzy logic could help you. Because it's so quite like possibly you are going to have high blood sugar. It means that so you need to take into account. So as a doctor, for instance, if your blood sugar is 9.99, whatever, like then you need to somehow 
uh, take into account this possibility that you are gonna have high probability like the blood sugar uh, problem. Can you hear me? I don't know if, if you can hear me well. Um, counting that you can hear me well. So for that, we are using a uh, hybrid methodology, fuzzy logic, uh, preference ranking organization method for enrichment evaluation. This is Prometheus. Here, when your data is not really like uh, crispy, like it can be non-crispy as well, or your data could be yes, no, or you could weight it, you could number, like any kind of data, uh, it's covered by Prometheus. So you could use any kind of different type of data and Prometi will handle it somehow. Like it's going to turn this data into the like some mathematically like easier uh, application when you do it. Okay, so we do, we do use the linguistic scale for that. As Dr. Barna mentioned it, so imagine like your data is from zero to one, you could divide it. You could divide as low, as very low, medium, high, very high, or even you could divide it into nine. Here, usually we used to have like five different uh, data linguistic scale, but you could have more if you would like to like divide it more, certainly. But usually we use linguistic uh, fuzzy scale. It gives us quite good uh, results, actually. The basic steps of primitive, if you talk about, there is, uh, you need to have like each criterion and you need to determine a specific preference function. Usually it's Gaussian function, which is covering more data like in the edge. And then second uh, step, it's equally defined with the weight of the criterion. So weight means that how important the data is for you. For instance, if you think that, for instance, I'm just, trying to think a system and methodology that you would like to compare it's uh, very cost effective so it means that the cost is important for you you could weight it important somehow like important uh, in this kind of criteria this is second step and the third one so then you need to have all of the alternative and then you need to define the out ranking relation and then as a fourth uh, step, the, you need to determine the leaving and entering out ranking flows. And then uh, you need to determine partial uh, period order on the alternative. And then finally, you will get the net out ranking for each of the alternative. Like finally, is result, which is the best option for you as a user. So I would like to say that some MCDA projects, like multi criteria decision analysis projects here, you could apply quite everywhere. So nuclear reactor site selection project, so evaluation and selection of 542 investment project by the Norwegian uh, Ministry of Engin Energy, NATO senior executive uh, selection project using NASA MCDM in order to de define some part of the rocket to send to the space. Like you could, you could see that this kind of techniques you could really apply everywhere. It's quite interesting. Uh, but as as I said before, no one has ever uh, applied it to civil engineering in this specific like kind of study, uh, rather than our group with Dr. Hussein. So here I will I will show two different studies which. One of them is not published yet, but it's going to publish soon. And another one is published as an example of application. So you could think what to do exactly like this, with this kind of uh, specific field. So the first one is application of fuzzy multi criteria decision making analysis for evaluation and selecting the best domestic water standards. So this study is done with Dr. Hussein and Dr. Barna at Nima Amy. Is one of the PhD students from civil engineering department. I would like to acknowledge that acknowledge them. So in this study, uh, we evaluate all of the water standards using in board. So using these water standards with multi criteria decision analysis, we evaluate and we set which is the best option uh, given all of these kind of criteria, which I will explain you now. In principle, water quality standards has their own uh, disadvantages and advantage, uh, advantages, 
and you really don't know exactly which is the best option for your own specific country. But developed countries make their own specific standards uh, that suits locally. In principle, in this first aim of this study, uh, we need to define all of these standards and all of the criteria. Criteria means it can be cost, it can be eff effective efficiency, uh, it can be like uh, lifetime. Depending on the thing that you are choosing on the system, it could be anything that the expert will tell us what important is. And then you need to weight these criteria. Weighting means that the expert must have told us which uh, the criteria has more weight, like from, for instance, from zero to one, which is most important. You could say it's very important. You could say medium important. You could say low important or very low important, very high important, this kind of thing, for instance. And then you need to de fuzzy it and then you need to optimize and finally you need to rank it and then you will see all of the results. So according to the standards, we, will, uh, we have WHO, like World Health Organization, which is commonly used in the world. So it has their own uh, like parameters. They are somehow like modifying it. A, for instance, temporary value of indication is calculated by God's values is less than achievable quantity level. There is C, materials concentration uh, at or below the healthy indicator value could have on uh, impact, impact, impact. And we are collecting all of these kind of criteria as the experts are telling us. This is for who, for instance, and we are checking all of the other standards as well. There is European Union, there is Australia, there is Canada, there is US. They are developed country has developed their own specifics and we have compared them all. So in order to compare all of them, you need to have all of the common criteria which is matter to, you know, which affects this kind of standards. And that is the data is coming for us. Like as an expert, we are taking all of these criteria and all of, and as Dr. Berna, Berna mentioned, we are applying all of the might, math, math, the mathematical thing behind of it. Like you, you saw it from the presentation. There are lots of math, and then you need to weight it. Weighting means that, like expert will tell us that, for instance, this is one of the criteria, Aldicard, for instance. So expert is telling us this is very important. Then we rate it as very high, like very important. For instance, the expert is telling us barium is important, not that much, like very high, but high important. This is, we call it high important, etc. like medium, and it could be very low and low. This is five different uh, selection you could make, but you could uh, have it more. And uh, after that, uh, you need to maximize and minimize it. So what does it mean, maximization and minimization? Maximization means that, for instance, in the system, like you need to care about cost. The cost should be minimum, like as like the simplest way to um, to explain it. For instance, like one of the criteria should be maximum because maximum should be better. Like if an expert is telling us this should be maximum because this is better for us, then you are maximizing the system is, and then the system is telling you if this is maximum is taken into account that is positive. Uh, I hope I, am, I explain it a little bit uh, in a simpler way because it's a little complicated in the math when you calculate. And then after that, when you apply all of the math behind the, the Dr. Barna has uh, showed it before me, uh, this is the, the result that we got from uh, the multi analysis we have used it. So European uh, standards, water standards, looks to be one of the best options. Uh, according to the expert and the mathematical results we have, while US uh, standard is the latest one, while uh, the WHO is third one, for instance. This is also a little surprising, WHO looks to be like most commonly used one, but European looks to be better. And this is the plot. While you perform the analysis, for instance, so you could see that there is plus one and there is minus one and there is zero. So when you see plus one, like all of these positive effects, 
or technology or the things that you would like to compare. And the latest one, US, looks to be all of these negative effects. That's why you have all of the, uh, neg the, the latest version and all of the negative effect effects affect the system itself. So we have used it, but we need to take into account that. So this study is not published yet, but is accepted to be published uh, soon, I think. Uh, but you need to take into account that. So you could change all of the criteria according to, according to the, the expert, and you, you can use different kind of methodology to double check to see if uh, the results are, are the same, actually. So another study that I would like to share with you, it's evaluation disinfection techniques of water treatment. This, is, this study has done with Gebre Gelete, Dr. Hussein, and Dr. Berna, and Tagese Gishama from uh, Civil Engineering Department. So here we have evaluated all of the water disinfection method, methods. So as you all know that water is really, uh, it's a lot around all of the world. But the problem is that we, why we cannot use it actually the contamination of the water resources is frequently occurred. That's the problem. So you need to somehow clean it. So for that, for that you are using a different kind of techniques in order to treat the water. This we call disinfection methods. So here you have all of the disinfection methodology. Uh, there are five of them. So when you think about that, for instance, ultraviolet uh, violation, this is water is exposed to short wave radiation to kill microorganism in it, and it doesn't form harmful uh, product. It is, in principle, incredibly rapid process, but also cost effective and straightforward uh, to maintain. But there is disadvantages of using UV, uh, UV uh, the, the lack of residual disinfection. There is, uh, there is chlorination. It's like when you add chlorine in to the water, so you are somehow like you are cleaning it out. It's cheap, effective, uh, even at low concentration, it's practical, but there is unpleasant test. Uh, and also it requires highly skill, uh, skilled engineers in order to do the, all of these uh, structures. There is chloramination, uh, it's like monochloramine is formed by dosing chlorine and ammonia. It provides residual disinfectant in uh, distribution lines. Uh, it requires skilled personal, uh, uh, personal and chemical access. It's less efficient in pathogen removal. There is also generated on site by passing dry oxygen through a system of high voltage. This is expensive uh, method. That's why it's not really quite a uh, preferable way. But also, it requires a highly skilled workforce for maintenance, and it has high energy input. There is chlorine uh, dioxide. is one of the methods disinfectant, especially for alcohol uh, control. Uh, as chlorine dioxide is unstable and, se and sensitive to pressure, temperature, and light, it's highly explosive and in the air, and it, its concentration are 4% and above. So you could see that you have like five, five different methods. So as, a, like, as an expert, you really don't know since it has their own advantages and disadvantages. So lots of uncertainties. You don't really know which is the best option for you, which is the, you know, which technique is, is uh, good to take it, to buy it, for instance. Uh, you could think that lots of criteria, like there is capital cost, operation and maintenance cost, there is pathogen removal efficiency, reliability, residual formation, operational simplicity, safety risk, undesirable by people. So you need to think that the more criteria you put it in this analysis, the better result you will get it. So lots of criteria means for us the better, the clearer result. Like exactly that's what I would like to say. So in principle, when you compare all of this kind of methodology and you weight them, as I explained before, like which is the most important, which is not, which is less important with an expert. So you have this result, ultraviolet, 
violet radiation looks to be one of the best option for the user, while uh, chlorine dioxide is the worst, worst, worst one. So this is the plot that uh, when you see all of the positive effects and negative effects, and this is the result for ultraviolet radiation is the best one because of all of these criteria are looks to be like very positive. While you compare with this, for instance, the chloromination, it, it has lots of negative effects, like negative criteria. That is the reason that why it has the latest effects. So if you can, and also in this specific study, so we have used uh, different techniques. This study is published, by the, by the way. So this study, it's, uh, it has different kind of methodology to double check, to do the sensitivity analysis. If the results are the same and the result looks to be like the same exactly it didn't change but uh, i would like to point it out again so this depends on the user uh, the expert like if the expert will tell us that okay the the for instance the materials cost is not important for me at all the result will change slightly so you need to take into account this those are the references Thank you very much. That's all. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, is it okay? Is it okay? Yes, Hojan. I can hear you. That's all, Hojan. Uh, uh, I appreciate Prof. Dr. Gilbert Ozan, Earth Shaheen. Uh, thank you so much thank for you your so much really, for you. really very impressive very imp and professional presentation. You made more clear how multidisciplinary study happened together successfully. Uh, we learned many things as a novelty, but also you prove us uh, the multidisciplinary studies. Uh, how can we do? And uh, to show us uh, the published papers uh, from different uh, disciplines. It was a good example, and uh, maybe this will be another example for other groups, other academicians. They have to come together and they have to publish, uh, they have to share their knowledge, novelty, experience. And it's really a good uh, idea uh, to come together to share uh, knowledge. And uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, I would like to uh, repeat again, a very professional and very uh, impressive presentation. And uh, I would like to turn back the listeners and if they have any question or not. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, you stay with us. They, they, stay, they stay with us a long uh, time, approximately two hours. Yes. Uh, yes. And if no any question, do we have online class next semester? <laughs> Very interesting. We have to ask the rectorate. It's not clear. It depends on the pandemic uh, situation. Uh, whoa, with the parameter is really multidisciplinary. Yes, okay. <laughs> it's good. And wonderful presentation. Thanks, Dr. Verna. Yes. It's coming, huh? Let's wait a little bit before closing the speech and our uh, session. Thank, Thank you for the presentation, Hussein. Yes. yes. Was the speech uh, our session or not? I'm asking Maner uh, because of um, he's managing this program. Uh, I also like to What do you think about Let me say. Helping us. Thanks, and like let's close or not? What do you think? Okay, let me say thank you so much for. Sorry, sorry, Ajam. Some trouble maybe again. No, any problem? Okay, thank you so much for all your contributions. Special thanks to us.